Okay, so episode thirteen of Void of Civilization showed over. You may be thinking, why does this look so different? Well, reason? Well, it's because it is. So these are border borders. I finally added them. Now, obviously, this th this is not completely accurate because <sighs> well, I had to kind of change some borders because I was way too lazy to draw them. You know, I was just a little lazy. <laughs> so yeah, obviously this is a little bit different. Kind of looks like this. This is obviously different. Kind of had some like this much or something. For Russia, they do have a lot more land now. Kinda, you can tell. A little bit, no, not really though. And, uh, yeah, so, this is how it's probably going to look for a while. But, yeah, uh, let's get started. So, yeah, first off, we have the Empire of Rome. Well, no, it's like, it's the Ottomans, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, people see this as the old era of civilization is back. Where this country got very big and collapsed, but this time it's a lot smarter, smarter, but it's still back. And their next goal is actually going to be uh, going after wherever the hell this is. Um. So yeah. Um. Uh. So the red team with its superior navy. Goes off the coast, captures the capital, and it just surrenders at that point. And for the peace treaty, it gets completely annexed. You know, it gets integrated in the country. <laughs> and the Ottoman Empire. I'm trying to call this Mesopotamia. So, Mesopotamia thought that. Thought, what if we were a little bit more connected? And so they look down here at Sudan, I guess. And everyone starts looking at them as well. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Sudan, you're kind of screwed here. However, instead they get sent an ultimatum basically demanding this. They demanded this land and they get it. However, this doesn't mean that Sudan does have to change their capital. So their capital will now be. Just here, I guess. I don't know where to put capitals, man. Alright, but yeah. Um, now, they are a lot more connected. And, uh, yeah. Now, at this point, they are probably the strongest country. Followed by... And then it's Russia at second. Uh, third is the UK. And, yeah. In terms of economy, Russia's number one. UK is number two, and third is India. However, this is it, actually no, this is third. I guess Mesopotamia is third. <sighs> but yeah, um, a third world war, a second world war seems like it's about to arise, and so people make a little alliance. So yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be between Russia. And, uh, between Russia and the UK and France and Spain, Iran, this green Central Asian thing, India, Ethiopia, and finally Germany. <laughs> so, yeah, that is their alliance. But these guys' alliance uh, will be known as, with as. Um, and they don't really have an alliance. However, they attack the alliance, and World War Three has just begun. So, with World War Three, um, not World War Three, World War Two, beginning. Um, 
Yeah, uh, this is going to be very interesting. So this is also known as the War of the Second Coalition, or the or the Third World War. So first off, the Empire starts by attacking both Asia and, Ru and Russia, while also capturing the Strait and going up the Russian lands, while also go immediately going for Spain's capital, but Spain doesn't immediately surrender as it's not too much of an important city. In fact, the capital seems to be a little bit more north like here. <sighs> But this is just the official capital. But yeah, um, with their unexpected landing, they stalemate because they have more things to do everywhere else. So yeah, Russia Russia focuses the invasion on the Adriatic coast because they easily cut them off and are easily beginning their own invasion of. Well, them. However, Iran is getting destroyed by, well, this Mesopotamia thing. India is sending troops. Well, yeah, India is sending troops over there to help. The Ottomans are easily able to hold out with Ethiopia. They are not able to take the capital just yet. Now, the thing that would trigger everything would be the United States joining the war on the side on the side of Russia, because at this point the United States is a pretty big power. Also, Brazil joining it would also really help a lot. It tried to convince them, but it doesn't go well. And right now, the only friend that, that they're really losing against is Russia's friend, front. But then again, they are kind of holding out over here, so they're chilling. <sighs> However, uh, the red team makes two landings, encircling the capital, and capturing it. However, once again, not capitals aren't capitals don't immediately mean a collapse anymore, so they're chilling for now. These guys just. I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, um. Russia goes ahead and makes a naval landing over here in this peninsula and tries to focus on getting to the capital. With, uh, with Mesopotamia being concerned about this, they send some troops back. However, with this, the Russians are able to easily push back, and at this point, this is just a very big all-out war, with eventually even Greece being completely liberated. And also pushing back all the Ottoman territory. With this, they're easily able to just do stuff. How, and the Russians even are pushing back in this front. With the with the Mesopotamians being very concerned, they send some troops out of Ethiopia because they're kind of destroying them. We got them to about like here. So with them not being too concerned, they send about like three fourths of their three fourths of their army back just to defend. And that was a pretty good plan because they're able to stalemate down here. While also able to push back the Russians. <sighs> However, the UK is, is also sending a lot of troops. So they are able to help France for once. And also able to help the Spanish. However, uh, taking the coast was kind of smart. <sighs> And also, the Spanish are, are about to collapse here. They finally capitulate, and now are focusing on invading France. And yeah, this is kind of familiar, isn't it? So yeah, um, they push back the Russians a little bit over here, but not too much. They used to lose quite a bit of coast. But yeah, eventually they do, um, 
push back completely. And also, fo they focus on stalemating here, but also pushing back. They do push back quite a bit, but not too much. Because, well, they kind of, well, let's just say stayed, um, where they are for the, this is probably going to be where the front is for the rest of the war. But, however, something interesting is that the green country is kind of getting a little bit destroyed now because their capital is gone. Now, the lucky thing for Russia is that their capital is all the way up here, so, unless Finland joins, there's not really any real threat near them at all. But, oh, would you know, Finland joined the war. No, I'm kidding. They, they don't join the war. They're neutral. However, they are actually leaning more towards the Russians than these guys, so, yeah. So yeah, uh, they are pushing back quite a bit, but, you know, Mesopotamia is just kind of strong. Nobody knows how they got this strong. Everybody thinks someone's been funding them. They asked the United States to join, but they said they're busy. And everybody wonders what they're doing. Said, so, everyone wonders what the United States is cooking up. And then Canada leaks information that the U.S. joined the war on the red team. And with that information leaked, the U.S. actually does it. And they join the war on the side of the red team. So, yeah, the U.S. is still in the war. And now it's time for hell. So, the U.S. sends its troops. Uh, yeah, the U.S. begins to send troops over to, uh, you know, over there to Europe. And it's just where all hell lets loose. So the U.S. begins to, um, push with them. They're, like, number, th number seven in terms of military, so they're not too much of a threat, but still a lot of troops are coming in, though. So yeah, um, they begin to almost go after after this after Iran's capital. They capture Iran's capital, and now it becomes a lot easier to invade them. And now finally, and they finally make a landing in India using their superior navy. <laughs> And eventually, with their one-fourth of their army, they're still able to capture the capital and, cap and capitulate all of Ethiopia. With them not having to worry about Africa anymore, they send a lot more troops north. And this is where all hell is loose. Because, uh, yeah. So they make a landing in Crimea, and they capture Crimea. And they also go along the coast and capture all that. However, the Russians wanting their economy, desperately fight, and take it all back. Which kind of makes them a little angry. They do want to be connected, but the Russians are desperately defending it. Defending the strait, because it's basically their entire economy. However, they do get taxed for going here, so the Russians are also desperate. And, well, they go and uh yeah they basically just capture the entire thing and now they have no access to the agency <sighs> that they are they liberate greece and eventually they steal me and yeah so it's very back and forth between these two very big powers <laughs> but um you know the Russians are winning, barely though. The green team begins to actually push back because the you know stuff happens. However, it's not for long. But you know they do push some at least out of all of their coast, and they get their coast back. But they do end up stalemating again. <laughs> India helps them take back their capital. 
and push the Mesopotamia out of their lands. And they make a landing down here in the Arabian Peninsula. Invade, hoping to try to invade Arabia and maybe capitulate them. <laughs> However, that is not possible. And it seems like that these guys are actually going to win. And, uh, yeah, it's very confusing on how they're going to actually, how they actually are. We're able to do this. However, France eventually begins to like actually push back. However, the Allies are actually gonna have to sue for peace. Russia says that they can still keep fighting, but eventually they also sue for peace. Cause this is just like World War Two is finally going to end. And well. Let's take a look at this peace treaty. Okay, so peace treaty. Um Yeah, so Okay. So first off Greece was eventually released and you know given to well they were, they were forced into the Allies. Finland officially joins the Allies. The US and Mesopotamia make an alliance with each other and also integrate a puppet state known as Ethiopia and to the Alliance. Another new capital will be here. So no, I'll just put it somewhere here. Eventually, these guys actually do change their capital. They actually, act, they actually put their capital here. So yeah, they are now known as the country of Rome. And well, and if Rome actually wants to win, well. Rome wants to win against the Allies. They they kind of have to like um, like get stronger and mostly focus up on their military because like, if they get attacked, they're, they're gonna be done. Like the Allies are uh, fairly unscathed, while Rome did gain land. They also lost a, a pretty big portion. Like they lost, they lost access from here to here, and they also lost Greece. So, <laughs> yeah, that is an unfortunate loss for them. And Russia, and Russia now can officially, uh, you know, Russia can officially trade now. However, they get attacked by the red team, and plus they don't have any allies here, so it's pretty useless. So instead, they just go through here and trade with everyone. Speaking of everyone else, everyone else here actually does join the Allies. So yeah, um, now all of Europe, except for no Rome, is now in this alliance. However, Rome does have a lot of influence on African countries, like like Algeria and Sudan, while China also does join the Allies. We even have Indonesia, which has nothing to do with this, also join the Allies. The Philippines stay neutral for now, but they do kind of want to join. And I just, ah, uh, damn it. I don't remember. Okay, you know what? We're just going to say this is all part of Indonesia, and we're going to say that just Indonesia gave back some land. At this point, we're just going to say that just because, like, you know, I don't remember it completely. 
But Australia and New Zealand are neutral. And eventually they stop being neutral and they join the side of Rome. Because it's the winning side. Brazil also joins this as well. Thinking, And basically the two most powerful countries in the Americas just kind of stab, stab their backs at them. So, yeah, um, the Allies have some pretty big competition. You know, they kind of are stuck here. Japan is forced into the Allies as they are fairly strong. I don't know what happened to Japan. But anyway, just not sure to, whatever, whatever, it doesn't matter that much. Also, the Philippines is pretty strong, so they are indeed forced into the allies too. And these guys as well. Just join for protection, just in case. You know, they're literally surrounded. But yeah, these guys eventually get a lot of Africa to join their alliance. Mexico actually stays neutral because they don't feel like, um, you know, losing. Same with Canada. And yeah, now it's another big war pretty much booting up very, very soon here. So, um, yeah, we may see one next video. But this is part 13, I think. And, uh, yeah, things are really heating up now. <laughs> Recap, we just had World War Two happen. And it was like a five year, it was like a ten year thing. But yeah, the year now is 20... Uh, let's just say twenty, like twenty four hundred. Yeah, no, that's let's just say two thousand three hundred fifty three. Let's just say that, okay? The year is two thousand three hundred fifty three. Okay, there you go. But yeah, um, however you can kind of decide the year. Anyway, see ya.